Awesome. So something that we hear often is, well, why get the vaccine? I'm not at risk of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And it's a fair point. Some people whose areas might not have been as affected or their lives haven't been directly affected yet might not see that risk. However, especially if the new variants of concern circulating in, in many places in Canada, there is a high risk of infection to ourselves and to our communities. And um, besides the risk to your own health, there's also to consider that um, for all of us to get out of this pandemic, to go back to open businesses, seeing our loved ones, we need a certain proportion of our population vaccinated. So even if you or your area are not at risk, you know, if you want to reopen things and go back to normal, it's a good idea to consider getting that, that vaccine. Uh, we're all at risk of both COVID and the negative impacts of restrictions. And so ending the pandemic depends on all of us. The next question is, I already had COVID-19. Do I still need a vaccine? Good question. Short answer is yes. So there is a little bit of natural immunity that you get from getting COVID infection. However, we know that this can wane and it's not very strong immunity. Um, and that's proven by many cases in the last year of people who do get COVID more than once. Typically the second COVID infection is a little bit less severe, asymptomatic or mild, but still, I don't think anyone wants to go through this infection twice. Um, if you do get the vaccine versus getting COVID, we have data that show that the, uh, the level of antibodies is more stable and stronger. So you basically, basically get stronger longer lasting immunity from the vaccine than from COVID infection. So it's safe and encouraged for you to still get the vaccine if you've had COVID. Can individuals choose which vaccine to receive? Good question. And lots of people are wondering. Right now, the answer is no. This might change in the future once we have more vaccine supply in Canada. Vaccine supply is limited, and so we have to be very careful about who gets which vaccine. So right now it depends on your age and your medical conditions and other risk factors. As we do get more supply, it's not impossible that you might have a choice in the future, but certainly right now it's encouraged to consider getting whatever vaccine is available to you. And on that note, should I be waiting to get you know one of the mRNA vaccines or should I get one of the newer vaccines? We've heard this a lot especially uh, in Alberta recently where the AstraZeneca vaccine became available to healthy adults um, in the age range up to 50s to 64 um, and the short answer is it's best to get whichever vaccine is offered to you at this time all of these vaccines, as we saw earlier in the video, including AstraZeneca, are very effective at pre preventing severe outcomes, hospitalization, death. And with the um, increase in cases and tra community transmission ongoing, it's best to get protection as soon as possible rather than waiting for maybe a slightly higher level of protection. Getting that 80% protection now is really going to be um, the best the bet. And so that's why we say the best shot is the one you can get in your arm. And do the vaccines work against some of the new variants of, of COVID-19? Yeah, very important question. And to be totally honest, we don't know for sure yet. We're waiting for more information. There are data coming out every day, every week on this. And so by the end of 2021, we'll have a lot more info on this. Right now, all these vaccines look to work quite well against the B117, that's the UK variant but not all of them work against all of the other variants with the South African, Brazil variant. There's a lot of questions about which of these vaccines will cover them. And there are research and trials going on on this specific topic right now. So it's great. Um, the most common variant circulated in Alberta is this UK variant and it looks like the vaccine still works well against it, but we just don't know for sure if all the vaccines will work against all the variants. And it may be that we might need booster shots or additional vaccines in the future to deal with this. In my opinion, that's still better than having a never ending pandemic if we do need those booster shots. And now there's some, there's some provinces um, and places in the country that are proposing to delay um, receiving the second dose of some of those two dose vaccines. And we're wondering, is delaying the second dose safe? 
Good question. Right now we know that one dose can actually offer some protection. Obviously the best protection is after the second dose, but after one dose you can have over 80% protection um, from severe disease and that's very good. Uh, actually there are some data looking at the AstraZeneca vaccine that showed that delaying the doses to 12 weeks apart, spacing them 12 weeks can actually give better immunity and a stronger response than the initial um, four week schedule. So. Um, it looks to be safe. It cer certainly doesn't look to decrease your protection by waiting and by getting more people protected with the first dose, then we can end the pandemic and get protection to more people faster. And so that's the reasoning for this, that there doesn't seem to be a disadvantage. And in fact, there might be a slight advantage in getting a better immune response. And that's why it's been safe to, to extend out that interval and protect as many people. And what are the long-term effects of the vaccine or of the vaccines? With all this happening so quickly, of course, we don't know for sure. But as far as we know for now, there is no evidence at all that there is long-term harms or bad side effects from the vaccine. We do know that COVID-19 causes a lot of long-term harms. And, and um, there's this COVID long hauler or long COVID syndrome that specialized clinics have been set up for across, across the world. Um, some people complain of chronic fatigue, trouble breathing, decreased lung function, loss of taste. And so these are known to be fairly high risk, as, as high as maybe one in four, depending on the stats that you look at. So we know for sure there's long-term effects from COVID and we don't have any evidence of long-term harms from the vaccine. Have any deaths been associated with the vaccination? There have not been any associated in Canada yet, and we've given over 5 million doses of vaccine in Canada. If you actually search um, adverse effects, um, COVID vaccines Canada, there's a Health Canada website that tracks all the adverse effects reported from vaccines. So that we have centralized reporting that does surveillance on this. No deaths in Canada. Um, there have been those very rare deaths that we talked about earlier reported in Europe, but we don't know for sure that they were caused by the vaccine. Um, COVID-19, unfortunately, is causing ongoing um, deaths and morbidity, and over 1% of those who get COVID will pass away. So with the several hundred new cases a day, um, then that's you know a few Albertans every day getting infected and potentially dying um, from the COVID disease. And so um, really uh, the risks of vaccination are much lower when we look at deaths. And do COVID-19 vaccines affect pregnancy or fertility? So these trials were not done initially in pregnant women. They're often excluded from trials uh, for medications and vaccines in general. So we don't have data yet. Um, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada recommends the vaccine to be considered by all pregnant and breastfeeding women. And why is that? Because um, there's no documented risk as far as we know, but like I say, we, we don't have uh, full trial data, but in the real world data, we don't have any known risks or harms to mom or baby from getting the vaccine. And we've seen this in the data so far of over 3000 individuals in the US that were studied who were pregnant, there were no miscarriages or congenital issues related to the vaccine. And pregnant women who get COVID do have a very high risk of going to the ICU, having severe disease, much higher than non-pregnant um, individuals who, who get COVID infection. And that's why many pregnant individuals choose vaccination because of the benefits in avoiding that risk of COVID. Will we still have to mask and distance if we went once we receive the vaccine? For now, the answer is yes. Everyone has to follow public health guidance because we still have a minority of our overall population vaccinated. So we're not yet near those herd immunity numbers. And also it takes at least a couple of weeks for you to get full protection after the vaccine. That's after your second dose of the vaccine. And so you're not immediately gonna have full protection. Um, we're getting some info, uh, there's studies ongoing as to whether you can be a carrier, so whether, whether you can transmit COVID after getting the vaccine, we don't know for sure yet. It looks like there might be some protection against transmitting, so that's promising, but we don't have that data for sure yet, and we don't have anywhere near herd immunity. So for now, while it is very um, exciting to get the vaccine, um, it won't change your day-to-day -day life 
that much, but it will change all of our lives once we all get protected. Um, and the US Center for Disease Control, CDC, did say that adults who are fully vaccinated can consider gathering indoors without masks. And so we will get there. It's uh, promising, it will change your life, but it won't immediately mean that you can stop wearing a mask and doing all the practices that we've all gotten so used to. Okay, so one of our last questions, when can we receive the vaccine? So this depends a little bit on your age, where you live, what you do, and what health conditions you have. So in um, various parts of Canada, it depends a little bit on these factors as to the exact timing, but all, all areas are basically going down in age from the oldest, most at risk to the youngest, and also allowing those with severe medical conditions to get vaccinated earlier, as well as those who work in high risk settings like hospitals, long-term care, et cetera. So it varies a little bit depending where you live, but um, you can look it up. Most of these uh, info are available, available online and um, hopefully it'll be quite soon by this summer for most people. Okay, and then finally, where will the vaccine be available in our communities? So starting out, the uh, clinics that offer vaccines were specialized for these, then that's partly because of the mRNA vaccines needing to be at uh, very cold temperature storage. They couldn't be in any, just any location. Uh, with the other vaccines coming out and um, better um, uh, infrastructure and better systems for all of this, we will be having vaccines available in other parts of the community, including family medicine clinics, um, public health um, offices, as well as community pharmacies. And this depends a little bit on the province that you live in, in Alberta. We're going to have pilots of um, family doctors and pharmacists offering vaccines basically right away here at April 2021. And so this will be similar places to which you would get your influenza vaccination every year. Pharmacies, family doctors, public health. Um, and this info should be available from those uh, folks in the area that you live in.